So my friends, today we celebrate this great solemnity of Pentecost, and Pentecost is the birthday of the church. Today is the church's birthday. And with this, it's the Holy Spirit is sent in a visible way upon the apostles gathered with Our Lady and the other disciples and gives life to the church. Uh, and so we celebrate today. And that this is, you know, birthdays, birthdays, anniversaries, they're great opportunities for renewal, right? It's a great opportunity to kind of examine, like, why are we here in the first place uh, on a birthday? Like, how's my life going? What are, what's going to happen beyond here? Not in a morbid way, but it's a good opportunity for renewal. Um, we just, I was just attending someone's birthday celebration, and it's like, this is a bunch of people gathering to say that they're happy that you're alive. Like, that's good. Like, birthday parties are a good thing. A bunch of people get together and say, I'm happy you exist. I'm happy you're alive. That's something worth celebrating. And that's good, right? And same with anniversaries. Well, today is the church's birthday. Today is the church's anniversary. Today is the day that the church uh, was given this life by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is described by St. John Paul II as the soul of the church. The, soul, the Holy Spirit is the soul of the church, right? Gives life. I'm alive because I have a soul. Uh, I have a soul. That's what separates me from a corpse right now, right? If, there, if my soul left my body, there'd be a dead body in front of you really quick, uh, right? That's what happens when we die. The soul separates from the body. Well, the Holy Spirit is the soul of the church. It gives life to the church. Now notice, my soul didn't just jumpstart my body when I was created, and then, good luck. Like, no, the, my soul is still animating my body. And same with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit on Pentecost didn't just jumpstart the church. The Holy Spirit dwells in us as the church, the mystical body of Christ, in a real and permanent way. The Holy Spirit is giving life to the church right now. We read in that first reading um, that when the days of Pentecost were completed, they were all together. Now, Pentecost, the day that we celebrate today, is not an original Christian feast. It was a Jewish feast before it was our feast. That's why Luke is able to say when the days of Pentecost were completed. Why? Well, what's Pentecost in the Jewish faith? It's that 40 days after the Passover, the Israelites arrived at Mount Sinai and were given the law. Today, Pentecost, 40 days after Passover, would celebrate that God gave the law to Moses. Now, what happens with us in the church? 40 days after our Passover, after our Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, was slaughtered for us, 40 days after he rose from the dead, the new and definitive Passover, 40 days after we as Christians were initiated by passing through the waters of baptism, we are given today the new law, not written on stone tablets, but written on our hearts as God promised that he would give the new law and it would be written on our hearts. The Holy Spirit is the law of love. The Holy Spirit is God's love poured out. This new law of grace that changes us not from outside by saying, do this, don't do that, thou shall not, but changes us on the inside by making us men and women capable of living love of God, living radical holiness. The Holy Spirit, that first Pentecost, transformed the apostles. If you read the Gospels and then you read the Acts of the Apostles, you would think that it's just a bunch of people with the same names but different people. Like, the apostles in the Gospels are totally incompetent. They can't get anything right. They're always, Jesus has questions, they get the wrong answer, right? They want to call down fire and brimstone from heaven to consume Samaritan villages. They, they're always messing up and looking after themselves. And then when they receive the Holy Spirit, they are utterly transformed. The same people 
but totally transformed by this love of God, by the power of God, by the life of God that now dwells in their souls. And they're bold in how they proclaim the gospel. Now, this Pentecost is, it's interesting when you read the Acts of the Apostles, there's a number of times when the Holy Spirit comes down again, right? So Pentecost, again, wasn't just a one-day thing. It happened, it's a good historical event, and we commemorate it today. Rather, Pentecost is continually, the Holy Spirit is continually being poured out in a new way upon the church. The Holy Spirit is continually giving life and strength to the church. And so we prayed in the responsorial psalm. We beautifully sang, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Do we think that our world needs renewal in virtue and holiness? Well, what's the way to do it? Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Do we think that our church on the universal level, in the local level, on the national level, in our own parish, do we think that we need renewal? We need deeper conversion. We need to be living our faith more authentically. What's the way to do it? Oh, let's get on social media and we'll just, you know, get really angry about these things, right? And we'll just make a tough time for everyone. No, what's the way to do it? To gather and to pray. Lord, send out your spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can give life to the church. Just like my soul is the only one that can give life to my body. My, again, my soul leaves my body. I'm sure someone would try to do CPR and get me back. But like at a certain point, it's like, you can't do anything. It's gone. <laughs> That's it. You can't bring a corpse back to life. Well, the Holy Spirit's the only one. If there's death, if there's sin, if, there's, if we haven't had success in living our faith, Lord, send out your spirit. We need this renewal. We need to be transformed. And so, and God does. He does. We pray and it happens. Just as a last point, in a special way today, we should be praying for a renewal that's happening in our country right now, began last night. Uh, we're in this time of Eucharistic revival, these three years dedicated to the Eucharist and renewing our love for Jesus in the Eucharist. And just last night from New Haven began one of four pilgrim routes that are taking place across the country. So there's a group of pilgrims who began last night with a mass with Archbishop Coyne in New Haven, Connecticut. And they're going to walk, carrying Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament from New Haven all the way down the East Coast to Washington, D.C., and then across to Indianapolis walking, carrying Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. There's another group that's leaving from Minnesota, another from California, and another from Texas. Four groups doing Eucharistic processions around the entire country, all converging on the Eucharistic Congress that'll take place in July in Indianapolis. And now, if you look at the map, roughly speaking, what does that make across our country? It makes a cross. The sign of the cross literally across the United States as Jesus is being carried and processed from church to church, from diocese to diocese. And so we should pray for the success of this, right? For the, next, the group that left New Haven last night, they're walking and they're not going to stop till they get to Indianapolis. And there'll be people that will join them a little bit along the way. But this is a renewal. And we should be praying. Lord, send out your spirit. Lord, give us this new love. Give us this new faith. Jesus, strengthen us in this way. This is Pentecost. We can pray for this. We should ask for this. We should really make that prayer from the depth of our heart. Lord, send out your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Right? Come, Holy Spirit. Strengthen our minds. Strengthen us. Come Holy Spirit and renew the face of the church and the whole world.